Welcome to Denver Parks and Recreation at Home. My name is Vince and this is Rustic Home Decor. Today we're going to be making three projects. We're going to start with our key ring holder. We're going to go over to a string Colorado plaque and then we're also going to do a chalkboard today. All three of the projects that we're going to be completing today require some pre-staining. You'll want to pre-stain the wood that you're going to be using about 24 to 48 hours before you begin your project. That way the stain has plenty of time to set and dry. Today we're going to go through how to stain the wood properly so that you get that nice finish. You'll need some stains, some wood, some sanding sponge here or you can use regular sanding paper, some brushes to apply the stain, and some rags to wipe off the excess stain. So before we get started with staining, let's talk a little bit about the wood. I chose some pine wood. Pine wood actually takes up stain really, really well and it's fairly cheap. And since we're using this for home decor, we don't really need the wood to be super expensive unless you really want that oak or cherry finish there. So I've got my pine wood here and I'm gonna sand it down a bit. And so what you wanna do is you wanna open up the pores of that wood and you wanna also even out some of those surfaces. Some of the wood might have stuff printed on it or some darker spots or lower spots and this is really gonna even that out. If you really have a rough piece of wood, you might wanna start with a rougher sandpaper. About 60 to 80 grits will remove large pieces and also help round corners if you want that look. Medium, medium sandpaper is gonna be about 100, 150 grit and it's more for general purpose this here is a little bit more fine. Fine is going to be about 150 or more. Um, that's really what you're going to use to finish off a project before you stain it or paint it. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. I'm just going to stain the top part here. So I'm going to take that sponge and I'm just going to go ahead and sand back and forth here. And I know that this is fine. I thought the wood looked really good, so I didn't need to take anything out there. Um, I just want to even out the sides. I want to make sure that there's not going to be any splinters when I'm done. And I'm going to, like I said, open up some of those pores so that the stain gets really into that. And just a little bit. Once you're done with that, you'll want to go ahead and clear that off. So I might take one of my rags. If you've got a vacuum or some sort of blower, you can also use that to kind of remove any of that sawdust. We'll go ahead and do our other piece as well. wipe that one off too and we should be ready to begin staining. Now I've got two stains here. I've got a much darker stain. This one's a honey color and I also have a very natural stain. Um, you'll want to make sure that you shake these up really well to get that pigment all throughout so that you get an even stain. Um, otherwise you might have some areas that are going to be a little darker than the other. Before you open them up make sure that you are in a well ventilated area or outside someplace where it's dry but you also aren't gonna be breathing in the fumes for a couple hours. So first we'll go ahead and we'll stain with the natural stain. Uh, you'll be really surprised how well it actually brings out some of the natural beauty of the wood. We're just gonna take a little bit of that stain on the sponge and we're gonna go ahead and brush that on. And we're gonna brush it on really lightly and just cover everywhere we want. I'm going to take a little bit more on this side and move it over here. And what I like to do, because I know some of my projects are going to be on the, you're going to see the sides there, I also like to hit the sides here, so just really coming up the sides. What we're going to do is we're going to let that sit for a little bit. I like to let it sit for about five to 10 minutes and then we're gonna wipe off some excess. And now that I've waited just a little bit of time, I'm gonna take one of my clean rags here and I'm just gonna wipe off some of that excess. 
I don't want too much of that stain just sitting there. It's just gonna get sticky and create darker, more kind of blobs on my wood piece. Perfect. So I'm gonna let that sit and dry. Like I said, that's gonna go for about 24 hours to 48 hours. While that's drying over here, I wanna show you a little bit of a darker stain. We're gonna go ahead and use that honey color. Um, you're gonna see that it's gonna seem much darker once it's put on. And then once I brush that off, you'll see the real color of this. So it really looks like I'm painting this wood here, which is all right. Remember that five to 10 minutes is really what we're giving the wood some time to decide how much of this it wants to suck up. And then we're gonna once again wash off all that excess. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all the sides here. Good. And I'm gonna let that sit five to 10 minutes. So now that I've let that sit just a little bit and some of that to seep in, I'm gonna go ahead and take that cloth and I'm gonna lightly rub this off. And you'll see it's really much lighter color than that brown that it looked like it was gonna be. And just take that around and wipe all the sides. Being careful, when you touch, just go ahead and wipe down again. Remember, we just wanna get that excess stain off. And just like our other piece here, we're gonna let that piece sit for about 24 to 48 hours. Our first project we're gonna do today is gonna be that key holder. So for the key holder, what you're gonna need is four pieces of wood that are one by four by eight that are pre-stained in two different colors. So I've got them here. You'll need another piece of wood that's gonna go on the back. This one you don't have to have stained. Um, it doesn't matter the size as long as it's all behind. This one here I have a 1 by 2 by 14. So that's just going to fit on the back to help keep everything together. You might need a ruler here to help offset your pieces. Your screwdriver and some wood screws. A little wood glue and some paper towel to help wipe off excess. For our finishing touches, you'll also need some paint, white paint here, an old paint brush, and some painting tape hooks, and a stencil. If you really want some of that rustic look with the paint coming off, you can also bring a wire brush in so that after that paint is almost dried, we can brush off a little of that paint. We'll go ahead and get started on this piece. The first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually offset my main pieces so I see where they're at. I want them about an inch a piece, so I'm gonna take my ruler here and I'm just gonna push this one down until it's about an inch off. And I'm gonna do the same over here. Push this one down until it's about an inch off. So really my key holder is gonna be about looking like that. We'll want nice even across and an inch separation. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start gluing these pieces together on the inside. You wanna be careful with the glue you don't want too much of that to seep out onto the front. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is put a little bit of glue here. And I'm gonna go ahead and wipe some of that glue off. I don't want too much of it, I just want it to kinda hold the pieces together. And if I'm wiping it in any direction, I'm wiping it towards the bottom because the back, no one's gonna really see. I'm gonna go ahead and scoot that back in into place, make sure it's about an inch away, and then I'm gonna sit that together. I'm gonna do that again on this side. Adding some of that glue. I'm gonna try and keep it also from the bottom there so that where it's not attached to wood, it's not gonna get attached. I. Uh, already put some extra glue over here and that's okay. What we're gonna do is take a little bit of that paper towel and just wipe that off before it dries, making sure we get as much of that cleaned off so it doesn't give a different look. And I'll continue gluing these pieces together until I have each piece glued.
Once I have them kind of glued together, I'm gonna to take my paper towel here. I'm gonna clean up some of that glue on the front to make sure that some of that isn't really seeping out too much. Now what I'm gonna do is carefully take that piece. I'm gonna go ahead and try and flip that piece over. You might have to do it in pieces if that glue is still not dry. You'll see it dries pretty quickly. We'll flip it over here. And I wanna avoid some of that glue, so I'm gonna scoop back just a bit before I reattach these pieces. Now remember on the back, it doesn't matter too much. If you really wanna clean up some of that glue, that's okay. What we're gonna do is take that long piece now and we're gonna go ahead and glue that to the back. You don't want too long of screws or else you risk coming through the front and splitting your wood. Right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and screw this in. And readjust that, make sure it goes all the way across. We're just gonna screw one in each plank. And there we go, we've got our main piece together now. Go and flip that over, and if you do see any more glue coming through, clean that up as well. There we go. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna start decorating this piece. What I like to do, I printed off stencil here for home. So I'm gonna put H-O-M-E across the top here. And then I'm also gonna put the key rings across the bottom. What I wanna do to make sure that it's nice and even is I'm gonna take some painter's tape so I don't have to use a pencil. And I'm gonna put it just all the way across the top and then all the way across the bottom here so that when I'm putting my painting on, I can put that stencil right up against that paint and all my letters are gonna line up. And then I'm gonna put it across the bottom so that when I go to put my hooks in, maybe a little bit longer piece, when I go to put my hooks in, that I know exactly how to line those hooks up across the bottom so it's all even. Good. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start painting on the home. I have just a sample here of white paint. It's great for these little projects. You just get a sample, get it nice mixed up. For this, you want kind of a rustic look with those letterings, almost like it's kind of falling off. So honestly, get the worst brush you have at home, one that you probably forgot to clean off, um, maybe had a little project on before, Really what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that paint and we're gonna hope that some of it doesn't stick. So I'm gonna go and open this up now that I've shaken it up. I'm gonna scoot this over a bit so that you can see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and dip that paintbrush in and I'm actually gonna get rid of some, as much of that excess as possible. I just want a little bit of that paint coming up. It's almost like a dry brush. I'm gonna take my H, like I said, I'm gonna try and line it up in the middle right against that um, painter's tape so that I know how high that H is gonna be. And with my paintbrush here, I'm just gonna lightly go up and down. And so you'll see that there's still some stuff that's missing. If it's still a little bit much, remember that's okay. If you wanna take off a little bit more paint at the end, that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. You can add a little bit more paint here and take that off. There's our H. We'll continue on across the board here. O is next. Make sure I try and get that a little bit more in the middle. Now with my M, it's just a little bit too wide. That was my mistake. I got too big of a font. That's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my M, I'm gonna keep this edge over here. I'm gonna try not to go onto this last board. So I'm gonna just go ahead and paint my M all the way over and then just leave off that last bit.
And finally, last but not least, let's get that E going. You can find that if you're not getting enough paint off on the, on the can, you can also take a little bit of that paint and just wipe it on your paper or whatever your backdrop is just to get a little extra off. So we'll go ahead and add the E on, make sure it's nice and lined up. Now I've got my E. We're gonna go ahead and let that paint dry a bit. Um, like I said, if you like this look, perfect. If you want optional, you can take that wire brush in a few minutes and we'll take that off. So now we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and put the hooks on here. If you want to measure across, you can measure across each piece and put a mark about where the middle is gonna be on your painter's tape. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a hole right in the middle where the painter's tape is, just using a screw, screw and a bit that's just a tad bit smaller than my hook. I don't wanna go all the way through, I just wanna start it so that it'll be easier to screw in the hooks. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that piece, nice and lightly down and up. Blow out some of that air or extra wood. And I'm just gonna go all the way across. So now that I have those holes pre-drilled, I'm gonna go ahead and take my screw, or my cup hooks here. I'm gonna go ahead and twist them into each hole. And eventually you're gonna find that, that you're feeling that pressure and that's good. That means that you didn't over screw when you were doing the holes. You can even take this off if you want. Get some of this out of the way so it doesn't get stuck underneath. Screw this one in. And of course you want your hooks to face up. So that last one when it really tightens up Go ahead and twist it just around the last half bit to get it into place. Perfect. So I'm gonna take off the tape up here I get that nice home line all the way across. And what I actually wanna do here is I wanna go ahead and scrape a little bit more so that I can get some of that paint to come off. If you have some of the area where it seeped under, you can scrape a little bit more to get that. But for me, I kinda of like it a little bit like oops. So I'm just taking off a little paint. You wanna do this just before it dries. So it just looks a little bit more rugged. And voila. When we're all done, you should have a nice home for your keys. You can choose to hang it however you like, whether you buy a, a picture frame holder or you can just screw on a simple cord to the back so that you can hang it off a nail. Let's move on to our next project. So for our Colorado string plaque project, I've got three pieces of wood that are stained, pre-stained in different colors. I've got two darker ones and one lighter one. Uh, this wood here is one inch by four inch by 16 inch. You'll also need two other pieces of wood. These are just gonna help keep that plaque together. Doesn't matter the size, um, as long as the length is within that plaque. So this here is one inch by two, two inch by 10 inch here. 
I also have my trusty screwdriver and some wood nails, or wood screws. I've got some wood glue and paper towel to help clean up. I've got two templates here. This is gonna help me make my C. I've got finishing nails and a hammer so that I can put in the nails. And then just for that red and yellow colors, I've got some embroidery floss here that we'll go ahead and use as that. Let's get started. First, we're gonna go ahead and take these pieces and we wanna go ahead and glue them together. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over so they're also ready so that I can just go ahead and screw them together as well. So I'm gonna flip over the dark piece, the lighter piece, and then the other darker piece. I'm going to take my wood glue, being careful as I glue these pieces together. I don't want too much of it to seep to the front. So I'm going to keep the wood glue over here towards the back and just put a little bit at a time and just kind of drag that across. If you find you still get a little bit too much, taking some of that paper towel and just evening that out and taking a little off, that's going to help us a lot. This is just to hold the pieces together as we start screwing them in. So I've got that piece there. I'm gonna add a little bit here before I put them all together. Nice and light towards the back. And once again, I'm just gonna clean up a little bit where I think it might seep. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting those guys together squeezing them in. I just want a nice tight seal for a second. I'm going to also glue these two pieces on the back. Just a couple, couple inches apart. I'm going to go about six to eight inches apart here. just to give us a nice stability to the piece. Now to add just a little bit more stability, I'm gonna go ahead and take a few wood screws. I'm gonna put one screw, two screws, one screw. And the reason I do that is I've learned that when doing these projects, sometimes if there's a little space between the woods, you'll start getting your piece to, to move back and forth. So by putting those two in the middle, I help keep that from really shifting. So, I'm going to go one piece here. These uh, wood screws here are about one inch long, which is going to be perfect because the wood here is about 0.75 inches. So it shouldn't risk coming through the other side, but you do still want to be careful as you're going just to make sure you're not gonna split any of the wood on the back side too. There we go, now we've got our plaque put together. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. And what I wanna do is double check that I get any of that glue that did make it through. So I wanna get that taken care of so it doesn't ruin our final project. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my larger circle and I'm gonna go ahead and stick it where I want that C to begin. With that C, Eventually I'll put the smaller circle in the middle and I'm gonna do nails around the larger circle to about here, nails all the way around the inner circle and then I'll put one nail in between just to connect that C. Gonna take my finishing nail here. 
And you just want to make sure that you're going to go nice and controlled and careful exactly where you want the nails because once you get the nail in there, you've created that hole, you won't be able to take it back. So I'm going to make sure I got nice and straight, nice light taps. And then I'm going to keep on going just a couple, just about an inch, maybe a little bit more or less. Your choice how many nails you want to put. Let's keep going. So here's another piece that I've already put together and I've nailed in those nails. You'll see, like I said, that larger circle I stopped and then that inner circle I went all the way around and then I connected so I get my C with that circle just like the Colorado flag. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some red embroidery floss and I'm going to tie it to a nail and I'm going to knot it a couple times. Now you still want to keep your hammer handy for this because you might find as you're tying, as you're moving the string, that you uh, have one nail that might be a little bit, little bit too loose. And that's okay. We're just going to hammer that in. I'm going to leave my tail for now. I'll come back and cut that in a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start going around each nail, doing a circle to just do the outline. So this is where I'm going to find if I have any of those nails that need to be hammered back in. Once you feel comfortable with your design, we're going to take it over to an end and I'm going to go ahead and tie another knot. So now that I've got the red done, I went ahead and snipped off the edges. I'm going to go ahead and tie on the yellow and I'm going to do the same thing in the inner circle. So I'm going to go around all these. If you find that the red thread is getting in your way, feel free to push that down just a little bit. And then once I get back to the beginning here, it's once again whatever I want to do. So I choose what pattern I want back and forth. And just like the red, once I feel I'm done, I'm going to bring that back over and I'm going to tie a knot. For me, it's easier to pre-tie that knot. And then come back around to double tie that knot.
once you've done a few double knots just to make sure that the strings won't come undone, we're going to go ahead and take our scissors here and trim off some of the excess. And there we have our Colorado plaque. So for our chalkboard project, what I have are 1x2s by 12s that I went ahead and cut 45 degree angles on. I have two of those. I also have 1x2x8s that I cut the 45 degrees on. I pre-stained those. I also have a piece of plywood here. Doesn't matter what kind, kind of thin. Um, this is 11 by 7 This is going to be the back of our chalkboard. In addition to that, we'll need finishing nails and a hammer. We'll need our trusty screwdriver, our wood glue, some wood nails here. Um, we'll need chalk paint and a paintbrush. And then for our final touches, I've got some macrame cord and some hot glue. So first off, I'm going to start building my picture frame. And I don't want a lot of this stuff to show out, which is why I opted to use the finishing screws. I'm going to take my two 12 pieces here. And then at the ends where the 45 degrees go, I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill with the smallest bit I've got, just a hole, being careful, watching my finger. It's okay if you go out through the bottom because it's, the nail is going to go ahead and go into the, the 8 inch pieces. So we'll go ahead and do that on both sides here. Once I got that done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on the inner layer, just a tad to help with the sticking. And I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of the 8, eight inch up to the 12 inch. Now once I've got it kind of where I want it, I'm going to go ahead And I'm going to take a finishing nail. I'm just going to lightly tap that in. So like I said, I opted for the finishing nail because it, it makes such a small imprint that you don't really notice it's there. Now I want to double check on the front, make sure I get any of that glue out of there. Not to worry if they don't fit. If you're like me and you can't get a straight angle, that's okay. Um, what we're going to do is with our designs there, it's gonna, actually going to cover up the corners. So we'll go ahead and add on our other pieces here. Same fashion. Nailing it in. last one. So now that I've got my picture frame, like I said, I want to clean up any of that glue that may have seeped out. I want to make sure that if it's not fitting right, I'm hitting that nail just a tad bit more to bring it closer. Once again, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's just a tad bit off. Um, we're actually going to cover up a lot of that space. I'm going to set that aside because next what I want to do is I want to paint my chalkboard. So I'm going to take that plywood there. 
I'm gonna shake up my can as much as I can. Haha, uh -huh. poet didn't know it. Um, gonna go ahead and open that up and we're gonna start painting it that chalkboard color. We got this nice black color. I'm just gonna dip in, take a little bit off. There's a lot of pores on this, so you're gonna have to do quite a few layers. I'm just gonna go ahead and brush up and down. I'm gonna follow the same pattern so that my brush strokes are gonna create kind of this grooved up and down texture. I'm just gonna paint all the way to the ends. You can paint the whole front of this. Not all of it's gonna be visible, but um, it's better safe than sorry. Once you get it attached, you don't wanna unattach it just to add a little bit of paint. This first coat is just really gonna get soaked up by this plywood. It's just really porous. Um, that's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let it dry for about 10 minutes and then add another coat. And we'll continue doing that. We'll continue doing that until we have our full chalkboard. Now that's gonna take a little bit of time here. So what I went ahead and did is I already prepped a chalkboard for us. This one has quite a few layers on there. So I've got my nice black surface that I can write on with chalk. We'll bring back my picture frame here and you'll see it fits perfectly on top there, covers it all up. We're gonna go ahead and flip that over and begin attaching that. Just like everything else here, I'm gonna put just a little bit of wood glue just on the edge of the picture frame here. Once again, I don't wanna to put too much wood glue because it'll seep in and it's really hard to clean once it's seeping onto the chalkboard. I'm just gonna get that covered right there. I'm gonna take my chalkboard and lay it flat. Perfect. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna use the wood screws now to go ahead and screw on that board. That way it stays just nice and tight. You'll have it for a while. Uh, we also want to be super careful with how far we go with our screws. Uh, we don't want to push it all the way through and split the wood on the front. What I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to do, once I get that realigned, probably going to do two on each side and one on top and bottom. So we'll go ahead and get started here, just on the bottom. it tight enough that it's not going to come off and flush with the wall so that you don't have the nails there scratching up your wall once you decide to hang this. Perfect. Now we'll flip it over. You can see if there's any glue on the inside, it doesn't look like much came through. Um, you can choose if you want your picture frame this way or that way, however you want. I'm gonna clean out right in the corner there. Like I said, a little difficult to get in there. Um, but now we're gonna get ready to decorate the picture frame. So for the decoration, you can choose whatever you'd like to glue to your picture frame, whether it's seashells. Um, I really like the fact that this cord kind of makes it look a little bit like um, it's oceany and there's rope on it. Make sure you have your prepped glue gun. 
what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the frayed end and I'm just going to glue this down in a corner. There we go. Once it's kind of down, we'll go ahead and start spiraling my macrame cord so that I can create kind of this lovely spiral here, just adding glue as I'm going. If you get the little stringies, that's okay. Just yank them off and keep on going. So now I've got kind of a spiral going. I'm going to keep on going around and around. Just adding a little glue as I go. You don't need tons. In fact, too much is going to start seeping out. And you're going to start having to cut off a little bit of hot glue if you put too much on there. And continue gluing. And wrapping. Once I get to about the size that I want to be, I'm going to take my loop. I'm going to continue on so I can make it to the corner. But I don't want to just go straight over. That seems just a tad bit boring, if I don't say so myself. And then what instead I'm going to do is I'm going to do nice up and down waves with my rope. So I'm going to go ahead and put a wave with my glue gun. And that's where my rope is going to attach. And maybe I'll put a wave down here. I'm just going to attach the rope in there. I'm going to keep on going here. If you do get a little bit too much glue, that's okay. Um, we will work with a little bit of an X-Acto knife to help cut some of that glue out um, afterwards so it won't ruin the whole project. Let's see, I'm going to go back up. And this is where it's going to get a little bit more interesting because now instead of starting in the center of the spiral, I'm going to end up starting on the end of the spiral. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this back up, and then I'm going to start my other spiral. And so I'm going to put a little bit of glue there, pull out a little bit of that extra. Now with our spiral, this time it's going to be a little different because instead of starting in the center, we're going to be starting on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and build my spiral how I want it so that I kind of get that idea of how much of uh, the cord I want to use, what the size is. I want it to about roughly the same size as the other side here, so I can be a little bit more symmetrical. Once I've kind of built it and had an idea, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing around in the corner where that rope is going. Oops, looks like it's getting a little out there already. So. I'll start on the outside there, really building that cord. There we go. That seems like a pretty good one. So I'm just going to go ahead, in here I'm just going to go ahead and put a lot of glue and then just start spinning that cord inside it. Push it over to the side, continue rolling it. 
Now a lot with this cord is it kind of wants to come unraveled, so you might find that you have to twist it in a certain way as you're putting it in. That's okay. Just around. And I'm going to fill up right there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rope across and I'm going to glue it just a bit so that I can begin going up to the other side. And do my spirals. As I get to the end here, I'm going to go ahead and curl it back up, and I want to go right by the side here, but I don't want to cut my string right there because I kind of want some place to hang with a little bit of chalk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of length here, and I'm going to go ahead and cut from there. Now if you had your piece of chalk with you, what you can do here is you can wrap this around and just glue it to your piece of chalk. Um, or if you want to just kind of create a loop for a pen or a pencil or chalk to scoot in, um, what I would suggest is just gluing a little bit on the end here to keep that frayed together and just gluing it to itself. And it may be hot here, so be very careful. Just going to glue the limb together. And as it sets, we've got a nice little loop to stick your chalk in. The final step to this project here is to clean up the glue. Whew. So what I have is this lovely little X-Acto knife. 
I want to be careful that I'm not taking off any of the wood because I worked hard to get that wood stained how I wanted. You're just going to push lightly into some of that glue that's hanging out. So I see I've got some glue there. I've got some glue on the sides here. I'm just going to kind of cut into that glue and then slowly pick it out. So I'm going to cut and then cut that piece off. That way, as I'm going through, it looks like the rope is just there and you don't see the glue. Pull off any of those stringy strands. And voila. We now have a chalkboard for your use. You can hang it however you'd like. Once again, this way or both vertical or horizontal, but your choice. Now that we've finished our three projects, I hope that you enjoy your new key holder, your Colorado string plaque, or your chalkboard, or any variety. Remember, you can do whatever you'd like just using some of the simple techniques we did today. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next time.